Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's second video in a row uh, that is based on um, problems that were sent by one of my subscribers and here is a problem. The mean gap size in 73 snakes was 31 mm and in 33 snakes that survived after starlings arrived it was 35 mm. If offspring of the surviving snakes had gaps that were on average 6% larger than the population before the starlings, what was the narrow sense heritability of gape size? In a couple minutes I will show you how to solve this problem, but my first remark would be uh, that uh, starlings do not eat snakes. This is a uh, mistake. Snakes can eat starlings or can eat um, the uh, eggs in a nest, but not vice versa. So probably if you uh, would show this uh, solution to your professor, you can get uh, extra credit for this information. So, okay, let's uh, solve this problem. And I believe that person who sent me this problem uh, couldn't um, solve this problem because uh, took a formula from the textbook that uh, says us that uh, narrow sense heritability, which is h squared equal to uh, variance additive divided by total phenotypic variance, so Vp. And actually in order to solve this problem we cannot use this formula, so I cross out this formula and I will tell you just um, maybe real life example there are many ways how to get a girl into your bedroom. So there are many ways how to uh, calculate neurosense heritability and this is not the only formula that we can use. And today we are going to use a different formula based on the information given. So uh, formula would be h small squared because if we would use H capital, this is going to be uh, broad sense heritability. So H small squared equal to R divided by S. And now I will explain uh, what all these letters stand for and how we are going to use this formula in order to solve our problem. But first let me explain some theory. So imagine that uh, 73 snakes, uh, they don't have uh, the same size of uh, 31 millimeter. Uh, this is average. So some of them is less than that, some of them more than that but average would be 31 millimeter and how um, this trait or any other trait uh, usually distributed it is distributed with such a bell shape uh, where as you see uh, we would uh, expect extreme phenotypes to be present in smaller quantities so this is going to be one extreme this is going to be another extreme but uh, most of the animals would be here. So uh, this is going to be frequency of occurrence of particular phenotype and here would be size. And here would be our average or our mean. As you see, uh, frequency here would be higher, for example, uh, 10 here, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So uh, let's uh, imagine that this curve totals uh, to 73 snakes. And as you see, most of them would be 
uh, say if uh, average is 31 millimeters so 31 here and uh, let's say uh, this is distributed between 26 and uh, 36 so 31 would be in the middle now imagine that uh, some birds came and uh, ate uh, those snakes that uh, have small gaps. So if you think uh, that all these phenotypes would be eaten, this is not true. Uh, what uh, really happens in real life that uh, uh, more of this would be eaten, but also some of these different uh, phenotypes also would be eaten. But as you see, uh, distribution is not even, so more of this would be eaten than the rest. So the mean would shift to the right, because frequency of these phenotypes uh, would be uh, more prevailing than frequency of these phenotypes. So new uh, mean would be, say, somewhere here and we are given number uh, that is 35 millimeters so previous one we were 31 and it shifted to uh, 35 so here is a shift to the right in some textbooks you may see a new curve here uh, like this with peak over here but this is not always the case because uh, what actually you can see in uh, real life uh, if we would use dots instead of a smooth line to show distribution we would see something like this and uh, when some phenotype uh, now would be present in uh, lower quantities that means that uh, we don't have change in uh, this curve we just lose some points uh, on this um, curve so now you see uh, phenotypes here on the right uh, is present in much uh, higher frequencies so those phenotypes here on the left and uh, of course mean uh, wouldn't be exactly here in the middle but also would shift uh, somewhere here so after selection pressure uh, also we can call it uh, environmental pressure curve would look exactly the same but uh, frequencies of different phenotypes may change and also as you see um, distribution of trait also would be the same or we can call it virance. So virance still would be between 26 and 36. Let me now clean this space and let me introduce some new letters to our diagram. So this is going to be mean uh, before uh, selection, mean of population. Uh, let me change to yellow color. So and this is new mean uh, after selection. So I will use green color. So I'm going to use also T to show the mean after selection. And as you see, it's changed uh, from 31 millimeters to 35 millimeters. So we can find the difference. And uh, S here stands for selection differential so difference between 31 and 35 would be 4 that means from uh, t1 this is mean uh, after selection we deducted uh, t uh, that is uh, mean uh, of the population before uh, selection pressure 
and as you see this is going to be 35 minus 31 and this is 4 and uh, 4 is selection differential and R in our formula stands for the response for the selection and what uh, was a response according to our problem if offspring of the surviving snakes had gaps uh, that were on average 6% larger than the population before that means that to the uh, mean of the gap size of the original population we have to add 6% or in other words uh, we have to divide 31 by 100 and multiply by 160 in order to find uh, plus 6 percent and the answer would be uh, 32.86 millimeters and this is going to be a mean of the F1 generation so should be somewhere over here and uh, this is F1 generation and we can say that curve now would be distribution curve would be would look something like this with uh, a peak here in the middle uh, of this uh, curve that I drew with white color and we also can say that this is going to be uh, mean of F1 generation so T2 I can use so R would equal to mean of the F1 generation uh, minus uh, mean of the original generation which is um, I used uh, yellow color so this is going to be mean of the original generation and uh, according to numbers are given this is going to be mean of F1 uh, generation so uh, 32.86 minus mean of uh, original generation that is 31 millimeter so minus uh, 31 and the answer here would be uh, 1.86 and this is going to be R in our formula and S is selection differential between uh, original uh, population mean and uh, mean of population after selection so this is also going to be S and now we have all the numbers so this is R in our formula uh, one more time uh, uh, H small squared here stands for the proportion of the additive trait to total phenotypic variance and uh, in our formula R stands for the uh, response to selection and S is selection differential between original population and uh, mean of the uh, population after selection so let's uh, now put all the numbers so h small squared equal to 1.86 divided by 4 and the answer going to be 0 0.465 and this is going to be our answer today I, if you followed my explanation but still do not understand what uh, this number means uh, the numbers that we can get in our calculations are between 0 and 1 uh, here 0 means that all the phenotypic variants that we can see is uh, due to environment only as you remember the formula variance phenotypic equals to variance genetic plus variance environmental so uh, 
All the variance can be only due to uh, influence of environment. Uh, for example, in a barn, many mice are in breed, so uh, don't have much genetic variance. But still, we can find that uh, many of them uh, would vary, and this uh, variation would be to different uh, influence of the environment. And um, if we would take this number, that means that uh, most of the variants, phenotypic variants, would be due to genetic variants. Uh, so, um, example would be mice that grow in laboratory, phenotypically different, but we know that a laboratory environment is the same. So, uh, environmental variants would be small, and genetic variance would be large, if, of course, we would see uh, large uh, phenotypic variance. Uh, in uh, real life, uh, we can see numbers somewhere in between 0 and 1, because uh, phenotype is influence of uh, genetic composition plus uh, environmental influence. And my last note, uh, you may ask, why on earth we need to know these numbers? Why it is important? And I will tell you this is very important to know if you're a breeder and if you would find numbers like this or uh, even more close to one. This gives you information that you can uh, select for some traits in these um, animals or plants because uh, your animals and plants have a good uh, genetic uh, variance. But sometimes you may start a selection with inbreed uh, uh, plants or animals and all the variations that you see would be only due to uh, changes in environment. So uh, your selection would fail because all the animals or plants would be genetically identical. And even if you would uh, take the biggest animal or the biggest fruits from the plants, in order to cross uh, between the best representative of the species in the next following generation, you won't get better results, because all the variation were due to environment only. So this is very important to find if animal or plants variants, uh, phenotypic variants is due to uh, genetic variants or uh, environmental variants. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Send me problems. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.